what happens is sometimes we are subtly taught maybe not to respect our mothers because people might embrace the mother as a nurturing figure but not really respect her and honor her as an authority figure. Now, an example of a woman in authority in the Bible is Deborah. She was a judge over all of Israel. And to be a judge meant that she held the highest office in Israel. And Deborah had a husband. And she did not defer to her husband. And she did not submit to him as the authority in the household. She was the judge and she carried the authority. And her husband did not contradict her in any position of authority. Now, what people are taught, because sometimes women hear that over and over and over in churches, everywhere they go, that you have to defer to your husband, submit to the authority in your household. But in the Bible, this is a clear example of how the woman had authority and she did not have to come under her husband with the authority that she had. Now, a modern example of this would be the Queen of England because the Queen of England has a husband, but he is not the king. He does not subvert her authority as the queen. So us as women in today, women of God, we have to learn that the authority we carry is not trumped or circumvented by the husband or in our lives. So what can we do to act on the authority that we have? Well, if God gives you a vision, then act on that, and the husband does not have the right to overrule that vision. Another biblical example would be Rebecca. She was a mother in the Bible. And she had two sons, Jacob and Esau, because she conceived twins. Isaac was the father. Now, Esau was a hunter, and he was a strong man, where Jacob was a mild man who stayed in the tents. Now, Isaac favored Esau because he would hunt game. And you know what they say, way to a man's heart is his stomach. So he just see this big burly man getting meat and everything. He said, yes, yeah, it's a tough guy. I'm going to bless him. But before the twins were born, before even Esau and Jacob were born, God spoke to Rebekah and told her that there were two nations in her womb and that the younger will serve, or the old, yes, the younger will rule over the older and the eldest will serve the youngest. Did I say yes? So, <laughs> now, God told her directly, and she knew her children. She knew which one was the oldest, and she knew who the blessing was supposed to go to. But Isaac was going to go and bless Esau, the oldest one, because that's what tradition would have. But Rebekah told Jacob to go and get the blessing from his father. And Jacob went and did it. Jacob honored his mother. Jacob received the blessing of Abraham, which he would then pass to, or which then passed to Isaac, which then passed to him, which then became the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, the whole point was that Rebekah knew, and that Isaac, even her husband, could not overrule what God had placed in her, because God trusted Rebekah, a woman with the authority to make sure that the youngest child, which was prophesied, would be the child that would carry the promise, got the promise that God gave. So as women, we cannot allow the man to rule over you. You cannot allow the man to rule over you in your life. So what else can women do to make sure that they carry out God's plan and are not trumped by a man coming in or a husband and you can love your husband but he does not overrule you in the household and that's one thing that sometimes children do is they play one parent against the that's other right. the there's truth. that sense of I'm going to tell daddy on you and when little boys or little girls notice a power dynamic between their parents they will come up with that same sense of, I can just get my parents fighting and then I can do whatever I want. So now sure. your mother is dishonored, your father is dishonored, and you break in the commandment, which is to honor your father and your mother. Mm -hmm.